June the 7th, 2018. Looking at the USGS earthquake map from today, notice 94 of 121 earthquakes are near or almost near the summit of Kilauea. Also, there's a blue diamond that is showing a 5.4, and that's coming from a volcanic eruption. That's just to the west of the main uh, caldera right there. Now, guys, remember a couple of days ago, the walls of the caldera collapsed of that big crater lake and started damming it up? Well, we're seeing these explosions now. We're seeing massive fissures explode, and suddenly... It wasn't a river, it was a tsunami of lava covered a couple highways and rushed to the bay, destroying hundreds of homes. We'll take a look at that. But again, you've got uh, quakes that are along this rift zone. That's one of the uh, areas that moved almost 20 inches when all of this started, when we had the 6.9 earthquake, I think it was. You've got one offshore there also, and one up north on the tall, tallest mountain there. But guys, uh, solar wind speed is important. It's starting to come back down some. Remember, we've had it a peak at close to 800 in the last three or four days. Now, it's 378 kilometers per second. You, that is still fast, almost a million miles an hour. But in the purple line, you have the solar wind speed. Go back to June the 2nd and actually to June the 1st, and it started uh, peaking. Now, today on June uh, set the 7th, guys, going into the 8th universal time, we see it coming back to normal. But these spikes were are two to three times higher than normal. We are reaching 1.8 million miles an hour. Now, again, we're down to about 900,000 miles an hour. And you can look at your dates. Check this out. So we had basically coming in from the 1st, just coming down out of uh, on the seventh, about seven days of elevated wind speed, but you had about one, two, three, four, five days of really accelerated wind speed, uh, solar wind speed, guys, and the energy is collected by the shields and transferred into the core of our planet. It happens during solar minimum. We talk about that a lot, but here it's 792 kilometers per second back on July 3rd. Remember, as long as it takes it to heat up, it takes it to cool down. But at 800 kilometers a second, you're at 1.79 million miles per hour. Very fast, very intense. It's almost unimaginable. Now we're back down to 378 as far as the kilometers per second. That's 845,000 plus miles an hour. Today, looking at the sun from the Solar Dynamics Observatory, there are no significant equatorial coronal holes on the Earth's side of the sun. Guys, that's the open places in the sun that lets out these massive solar streams. Let's look behind the sun at stereo A. No coronal holes showing. We have This is the sunspot we watch come around on the uh, Earth-facing side. Now, there's some lighter areas involved, but as long as they don't open... We're going to get a reprieve from the double and triple solar winds, or the double and triple speed of the solar winds. Again, this is the back side. It's turning to the right. Let's go back to the front side from a different image of the Solar Dynamics Observatory. At the top, you see a coronal hole at the bottom. And there may be, you can see some weaker areas here and along this line. As long as that area there does not open up, it's going to give us a reprieve from the intense winds. That should help on some of the more intense lava flows. Remember, Fuego, which means fire down in Guatemala, guys. Over 100 now are dead. Some of the research and rescue folks have had to be called off. But uh, this, again, the earth-facing side, everything's moving from left to right. Guys, these are unbelievable images. This is where lava has completely covered. Vacation land is pouring to the ocean into that bay there. It got another area. But this lava, look at how the dark area is just behind the smoke. That's where it came down from the mountain. And from actually the fissure started about 25 miles below the summit. Going to satellite images. This is before it hit the bay. The bay is a dark area to the right. Look at the lava movement. And this is not just low 
or ground lava, look at the height coming up behind the houses. But it went past this point, this beautiful bay in front of it. Now it has filled way out into the ocean, dead fish, dead turtles. All types of dead marine life are floating up now because it, in the air alone it creates hydrochloric acid when this ash hits salt water. So down below you've got fish that are exposed to extreme temperatures and different chemical elements. Now the red area is where the lava has not hit yet. And you see the ocean to the right. The black area is where the lava. This is from Digital Globe. This is the image as far as a uh, real-time photograph. You can see the areas. Now it has changed. It has burned through all of the, the different, uh, the two different beach resorts. The homes that were spared were on hills that were higher than the lava field. Now there is no bay as it was. Now it is a more of an outlet or a peninsula going out. How many years will it be before you can inhabit the land? It was like this in the beginning. It took hundreds of years in some cases thousands and others to develop these forests on top of this layer of uh, lava rock. Look at the amount that's pouring in. The heat of the lava is so hot that it's running almost like water. You've seen some lower or slower magma movements. Look at this guys. Look at the speed pouring out of this. Some of these fountains have been well up uh, above 500 feet. And some even higher than that if you look at all the images. But again, it burned through. Now it's pushing out into the bay. It is forming new land. People are losing crop land. They're losing homes. And a good bit of the crops in this on this island were affected. Some estimates are up to 50% by the lava. Now there's so much going on that we don't know what's going on at the geothermal plant. Now this will give you an excellent idea of how wide this lava flow is. Look behind the steam. Look at the size of the homes. And these home, homes were not in the direct path. Some may be slightly higher in elevation, but they're not safe yet. The lava is still coming. Now, all the way into the ocean, not a new bay, but a new, more or less, a not a full peninsula, just a great extension of the land. But look at how hot it is and how fast it's flowing. This is core temperature heat, and the core is heating up because of our weakened shields. It's uh, all across the island. You're looking at USGS copters flying through there. Look at how it's going into the forest and burning the trees down as the lava starts to spread and flow into that. It's almost unimaginable, but you can see different uh, sections of cropland and look at the width of this. Guys, have you ever been out in ne uh, New Mexico in the Valley of Fire with that uh, old uh, lava flow comes in there and just in that park you've got that one island that the where the park is and the camp sites are guys that are on the small hill but this uh if it go keeps going it's going to wipe out more and more of the crop land more and more of the forest but it is an evolving island and it is a shame that people are trapped there that have had their livelihood there in hotels farms, uh, other um, bed and breakfasts, whatever, tour industries, but it, it is a volcano. And because of solar minimum, weaker shields, and more and more of this heat pouring in, this activity is going to increase around the planet. Now, you're going to have days when it slows down some as the solar wind speed is dropping. it have some time to cool off. And depending on when the next solar wind or geomagnetic storm continues, but right now, even in normal conditions, guys, even at less than 400 kilometers per, uh, per second, as far as the solar wind, the energy continues to pour in. We're going to look at the magneto pause in this video, but just try to imagine the scope and the size of this tsunami of lava. As it burns through, again, look at the cropland, the trees. When Mother Nature is ready, you, there's nothing you can do to stop it. But you can imagine this island evolving. Now, there's been eruptions throughout the years, but during the solar minimums, it would be nice to see the history of uh, the eruptions on this island. I'm sure someone did the research as far as uh, 
the geological research of the different lava, uh, the different ages of the lava flows, bet you we would see a lot of correlation. But again, as even the areas to where it doesn't reach and burn, you can notice such a yellowed edge from not only heat but gases. But uh, major roads have been cut off. There are no in and outs in a lot of places. There are people that are trapped, and I think they try to go over with the helicopters and try to see if they can see anyone in there. But some of these areas, as it reaches down to the bay, some of it has now reached out, burnt these houses, and has extended out beyond that coral reef line there where you see the breakers and further. But uh, so far, some homes have been spared. A lot have not, but check out these USGS images. It looks like a Jurassic era. But there's days and days of this coming, guys, because we've seen all of the buildup since June the 2nd up until today starting to pan out a little bit. So if you've got about five days of uh, the heat buildup, how long will that take to decrease down? But look at these lava fountains. It's amazing. And it's like the beginning of the planet in a lot of ways. We've seen different volcanic explosions around the planet. But this is one of the most amazing that we've ever seen. It's completely the rebuilding of an island, the additional, the add-on of an island. Now, look at, just try to imagine the scope of that lava fountain from this distance. That thing could be seven, eight hundred, maybe a thousand feet high. Because look at the amount of lava that's pouring from it and maintaining the heat at that distance to be that fluid. In USGS helicopter images, tremendous amount of cropland. The geothermal plant that we've talked about more or less has been covered up pretty much. I don't know if it will ever be reopened. It was in a very dangerous place. Some people said it did not involve fracking. Guys, it, it did. It, they were injecting high temperature water and chemicals down into the rock to force that steam, to, and it cracked, and it forced that steam back up. So it is fracking, regardless of what you think. But again, guys, this, if it keeps up like that, will build a new caldera. That, uh, the size of these, the width, the temperature is almost unbelievable. Never seen anything like it in my life, and I doubt many of you have either. Now, in the part two of this video coming up, guys, I'm going to keep this one about 10 minutes or so. But again, look at this. In part two, we're going to go to the Fuego volcano, and we're going to look at CERN in that one. CERN is running hot. The shields are weak, and we're going to show you the effects of what CERN has done today, and look at the images incredible again slow moving lava is cooler you see a lot of the mostly black rock on top pushing forward but here you're seeing the rivers and lakes of fire with this lava but guys we're watching it you watch it uh, you guys in hawaii this is not over my point again weak shields this is how the earth goes through these things and this is a grand solar minimum but again, just to touch on the Fuego, or fire in Spanish volcano, now a hundred are feared dead. They're saying that the ash has fallen across more than half of Guatemala, covering areas where agricultural uh, areas is crucial. We hope that that alone, the crop damage, will not mean a secondary disaster. The had to suspend rescue as, efforts, but again, rescue work at Guatemala Volcano interrupted. Death toll hits 100. The search for survivors from deadly eruptions had to be canceled because of dangerous situations. Today, June 7th, this is why. Look at the quakes. And the one in the blue right there, guys, notice it doesn't have the, uh, the peak of the lines up because it clipped out. It was stronger than it looks. These are images from a day ago. It's just repeating, I realize, but this this volcano is over 12,000 feet high. This is from the other edge, and you see the main area. But this is molten hot lava, just like we're seeing west of here on the equator in Hawaii. 
again, if you look at the Hawaiian volcano here at Kilauea and you move from there, you move eastward to Fuego, you're very uh, close to the uh, equator. Now think about a, a ball spinning like our planet is. And you have, in, in some in, uh, instances, you have water. In some other instances, you have these large, gigantic magma pools. The centrifugal force will keep the most of that energy near the equator. You just got to understand the fluid dynamics of it. But just draw a line from Fuego to uh, Hawaii. And then you go, if you go back the other way, you're looking over at uh, in the area of the southern Japan volcanoes. But you can see here at 12,346 feet for the mountain of fire of uh, Fuego. But guys, the, if you look into Japan, we need to watch a couple of areas. One, if you'll pull it up again, southern Japanese islands, there's a volcano there that um, is on red alert. It's not currently erupting, but it's called Kirishima. It is 5,577 feet high, but it's along that equatorial band. So we'll just watch it, guys. All, all of the links that I'm using are on our website, but I want to go here for a moment and look at the magnetopause. Very strange events indeed. Look at the almost black coloration, guys. If you've seen my videos for a long time, this is always blue or a yellow band. That's showing you extremely low density on the chart of solar particles. Solar minimum. If it's not during a geomagnetic storm with high solar wind speeds, guys, these shields are extremely weak because of this. That line that's just above 10 on the bottom normally stands out to around 12 where I've got that bottom line area. But these dark areas are extremely unusual. This means that this solar minimum could be much stronger than we think. Now this distortion at the north pole of the magnetic field lines every time corresponds to CERN running at 13.5 tera electron volts. And why would it bend it from at the north? Because CERN is in the northern hemisphere, right into the hall currents, the field lines, and under the auroras. The auroras are signs of where the most energy is coming in from our field lines. But guys, this is very dark coloration. The chart to the bottom right tells you how low that the proton density is in is around our planet between us and the sun and even creeping into uh, inside some of the satellite bands look at the coloration completely different and your time stamp going from this morning or just after midnight throughout the day but again lowest colorations i've seen in almost seven years on this particular chart and it's just showing you that the density of the protons, the electrical charge, is very low. That means the shields are very weak because that's what controls the strength of our shields. That's what determines how strong the dynamo generating inside this planet that makes our shields is running. But look at the coloration as we go through the days. Almost black to the right. Look at the deep purples. Guys, can you ever remember seeing that in any of my videos or anyone else's that covers this? Never seen it. It's extremely concerning to me because that it's going to indicate as the darker these colorations go, the less energy, the weaker the shields. And as they get weaker and we have a sudden geomagnetic storm, the lava is going to reheat. The quakes are going to increase. And I mentioned this before, during these grand solar events, they, t they can tie them into the modern minimum and other uh, cooling periods. And via ice core drilling, they can see that they had heavy, heavy volcanic ash fall during solar minimums. And these are cooling periods. Here you see the shields are doing a fairly good job at keeping the cusp closed not a lot of energy pouring in from this red band the planet is in the center of this the white section of that center ball is sun facing this is the energy burning off from the shields and the energy is coming from uh, right to left this is going to change notice this is just before uh, just after midnight last night universal time as we go through the day 
you're going to see different bending of the polar cap uh, in the closed magnetic field lines and you're going to see those what are called cusp c-u-s-p cusp open and you're going to see the red energy from this outer shield burn off just like the space shuttle coming in guys and you see that burning off that's what we're dealing with with the sun now you're starting to see at uh, oh, 900 hours this red line starting to creep in and what happens when it comes in through this opening it hits our ionosphere guys heats everything up the field lines transfer the energy notice on the southern poles the same thing but as we go through i'll stop it and you'll see that energy increase if you guys were out in the sunshine today you felt it and now you almost have a complete connection in the northern hemisphere here at 10 hundred hours universal time and as we go through this you're going to see both cusps fully involved and i'll show you where cern was running full power during these events because there's no reason for them to collapse that far and that much energy again look at the red turning to orange in the southern cusp here that's pouring into the ionosphere, heating everything up, bombarding the Earth with gamma radiation. That's been increasing quite a bit over the, few, over the last few years. Now look at the complete saturation of both the northern and southern cusp. So at 1,300 hours, guys, that's about 500 hours ahead of uh, Eastern time. So this morning at around 8 o'clock, it was already getting rough on the East Coast if you were working outside in the sun and across the nation and across the planet if you look at the times again saturation of the both openings in the shields going up into the day you're looking at very low density blowing back just like we saw on the low uh, on the uh, chart before and you're dealing with plasma at this point but again we get a break at around 1700 hours remember this timing from the energy coming in through the openings and again northern southern cusp it starts to pick back up and you can see some bending of the blue imf lines and again the cusp are opening the ionosphere is getting bombarded when it hits our ionosphere guys it it scatters into what they call a spray look at your time zones from cern today notice june 7th now it's down you can see it zero but through the day from 2300 hours just before midnight now again cern does not use universal time they're two hours ahead of that they use this geneva swiss time so you look at your timing a long period of time when we saw the cusp completely come in on the image before that in the magnetos pause we saw them start to collapse from the northern hemisphere why did it stop at that point this is the cryogenic page they were running so hot that this section right there, A, M, R, R3, and C, S, blue. If it gets above this two uh, point line in K right there, it's too hot. They have to keep these beams inside this giant collider, very cold, almost the temperature of space, to not blow things. And this one jumped. As soon as one of those ring cooling sections gets above that temperature or blows whatever it does they have to shut it down but again they are allowing now 2556 bunches at 6.5 ter uh, terawatt uh, electron volts that's per beam when they collide it's 13 tera electron volts when you saw the cryogenics heat up they shut it down now normally the beams like right there guys and right there are matched they're the these magnets inside these large tunnels that have to be so cold keep them aligned and colliding but when they turned it off because of that overheating they just spin out in this uh, outward pattern guys because no longer are they being controlled do you wonder why they have red um auroras over CERN this is over Geneva Switzerland this is where we're talking about look at those auroras this energy is being pulled into the ground via the hall currents, which are ground currents. We're CERN. It's underground in the same area, and it's feeding off of that energy. When it feeds off that energy, 
and uh, let's go back. What are they doing? Some say they're looking for the going back in time to the big burst. Why is that? Was that when God cast the angels down and closed that opening back into heaven? And they're trying to open it back, free themselves, because it is definitely fallen angel technology. Again, look at these red auroras over Geneva. As there's a lot going on, we're paying attention to it. And just a heads up on this, guys, so many have requested that the uh, that Patriot Supply continue the Alexa Pure at the lowest price ever on our, and exclusively on our channel at 149. They're going to run it through Monday, guys. That, that's almost adding another entire week. But if you're looking for one, if you're looking for something that will keep your family alive, the best water filter at the best price, you're looking at 1.4 cents per gallon. Think about it. It's a dollar per gallon for spring water off the shelf. Guys, don't forget it. It's a heads up. I'll put the link in the description below. Be safe.